Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. Uh, recently at church, we've been talking about the importance of next steps as a Christian. And we truly believe in the idea, the notion that regardless of where we are, where you are as a Christian and in our faith, there is always a next step that we can take in serving God and getting to know him more, growing closer to him. In our walk with Christ, there is always that next step that we can take to progress in that walk. And um, recently we've heard that at church in the context of serving with each other, say in the children's ministry or VBS or uh, missions. Um, there are many ways at the church that we can serve with each other um, as a body of Christ for the service of and the well-being of other people. And that's very much, um, you know, demanded and encouraged in Scripture. And it's clear that we grow in that as we serve each other. But uh, also, and I want to encourage you specifically today by um, something new that we'll be doing, Book Recommendation Monday is that not only can we grow by serving one another and with one another, uh, but Ephesians 4 also calls us to be transformed in the renewing of our mind. And um, other where uh, another place in Scripture it calls us to uh, focus our minds on things that are pure, just, right, and so on. Um, and we can't do that without other voices, other people speaking into our lives. And the foremost authority on that is scripture and the Bible. But um, if you know, you've been around church for long enough and oftentimes things like that get pushed under the rug, not intentionally, but we read scripture, we read verses, and along the way we might realize that we don't actually know how to read the scripture, or what the scripture means, or its ultimate purpose in our life and how we should read it. And it becomes too daunting and too intimidating to go off of. So uh, my first book recommendation today, and this has been a book that's been impactful to me in my Christian walk, it's called Taking God at His Word. I'll make sure I get in the frame there. It's by Kevin DeYoung. He's a pastor of uh, University Reformed Church in East Lansing, Michigan. This is published by Crossway. And this is a book that is um, about, about Scripture. It says on the back, can we trust the Bible completely? Is it sufficient for our complicated lives? Can we really know what it teaches? So. Maybe today you're finding yourself reading the Bible, brushing through it just to get the job done, and not even intentionally in that, because I fall into that as well, but doing it because it's difficult on some levels to understand what the scripture teaches. So this is a great primer for that. You might be thinking, oh, you know, this is too complicated for me and worried about too ac academic of a book, but uh, this clocks in at a mere um, about 120 pages. You can see it's pretty pretty thin, relatively, compared to what you might be expecting. And um, Pastor DeYoung, Kevin DeYoung, writes in such a way that it's very engaging, very humorous, and you'll find yourself laughing, um, as I have in the, in the reading of this word. I'll uh, read you an excerpt of this book um, right out of the first page here of chapter one. It starts like this. This book begins with a surprising, in a surprising place, with a love poem. Don't worry, it's not from me, it's not from my wife, it's not from a card, a movie, or the latest power ballad. It's not a new poem or a short poem, uh, but it's the most, it's most definitely a love poem. You may have read it before, you may have sung it too. It's the longest chapter and the longest book and the longest half of a very long collection of books. Out of the 1,189 chapters scattered across 66 books written over the course of two millennia, Psalm 119 is the longest, and for a good reason. This particular psalm is an acrostic. There are eight verses in each stanza, and with, uh, within each stanza, the eight verses begin with the same letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So verses 1 through 8 all begin with Aleph, verses 9 16 with Beit, verses 17 through 24 with Gimel, and so on and on for 22 stanzas and 176 verses, all of them exultant in their love for God's Word. In 169 of these verses, the psalmist makes some reference to the Word of God, law, testimonies, precepts, statutes, commandments, rules, promises, word. This language appears in almost every verse, and often more than once in the same verse. 
the terms have different shades of meaning, uh, but they all center on the same big idea, God's revelation in his words. Surely it is significant that this intricate, finely crafted, single-minded love poem, the longest in the Bible, is not about marriage or children or food or drink or mountains or sunsets or rivers or oceans, but about the Bible itself. And you can know that uh, this book will, um, Lord willing, guide you closer to a love for the scriptures and take that next step in your love for God through his word. So I'll place a link for this. Again, it's Taking God at His Word by Kevin DeYoung. I'll place a link in the description below and I encourage you to check that out. So thank you for uh, watching and uh, we'll see you next week. And we're looking forward to worshiping, serving and growing in God's grace with you um, soon and day by day as a church. So have a wonderful day.